Okay, welcome back everyone. We're going to go through some practice for hypothesis testing. And um, I didn't put these slides into the um, other slides that I posted, but I just want you to get some practice in um, what we mean by treatment, okay? Because when you um, go for, you know, making a hypothesis, you're making a hypothesis about a treatment that will affect a sample the way that it would affect the entire population. Um, so usually when we think of treatment, we think of it in a medical sense, um, but really it can mean just about anything as long as your two groups are different in that thing. So I'm just going to give you some examples and I want you to think about what the treatment could possibly be. So one hypothesis you might have is that drivers text less when they're warned of a fine, all right? So you um, are going to introduce something that's going to hopefully affect um, texting and driving. So in this case, what would the treatment be? If you said the warning, then that is right. So introducing the warning of being fined for texting is the treatment in this condition. All right, how about People with pets feel less stressed in general. This is an actual finding, by the way. <laughs> uh, so in this case, the uh, treatment would be having a pet, right? So this is the difference that we're interested in testing. Um, how about patients with family visitors get better faster? Okay, in this case, the treatment would be family visitors. All right, um, how about students who attend office hours get higher grades? This one should be easy. <laughs> um, it would be attending office hours. Uh, how about gamblers who don't wear a watch gamble more money? So what is the treatment? In this case, it's the wearing of a watch. Right? So the idea that when you remove a watch, they might spend more money because they're not aware of how much time has gone by. How about shoppers purchase more in bright stores? So what is the treatment here? Hopefully you said something about the brightness, right? So it would probably be the lighting. So how bright the lighting is um, would affect, would affect um, purchasing. How about babies who are breastfed have higher IQs? All right, in this case, the treatment is breast milk, right? And this is actually a very contentious hypothesis. There's, there's data that go either way, and this is why we can never prove anything, right? There's always someone coming along with different evidence showing different things. Um, how about diners eat more when they're happy? So what would be the treatment here? Mood, right? So whether or not they're happy. And believe it or not, we have many, many ways to get people to be either happy or not. And finally, how about people who meditate get sick less often? What is the treatment here? The treatment here is actually meditation. And this is a true finding. People who meditate get sick less often. So when you can meditate. All right, so I'm gonna have you check your knowledge. You got this question in the last lecture. So we're gonna look at the effect of alcohol on reaction time. This is um, a pretty popular <laughs> item of study. All right, so <clears throat> let's say that you're studying the effect of alcohol and uh, you and a group of researchers measured reaction time 30 minutes after participants consumed one six ounce glass of wine. So you had people sit down, sip on a glass of wine, and then 30 minutes later, you tested their reaction time. They used a standardized driving simulation task. So it's very similar to what drivers go through, for which the regular population averages a mean of 400 milliseconds. So milliseconds are a very, very, very short amount of time. 
a thousand milliseconds go into one second. So 400 milliseconds is just below half a second in um, reaction time. The distribution of reaction time. So if I get various samples of uh, the same size is approximately normal. So it's a normal distribution, which is very good for us with a standard deviation of 40 milliseconds. Okay, so we know our population parameters. It is 400 milliseconds for our mean and 40 milliseconds for our standard deviation. So the researcher obtains a sample mean of 422 milliseconds. So remember, this is 22 milliseconds difference. It's the snap of a finger, even less than that. You wouldn't even know how to measure 22 milliseconds. Um, and the researchers got this mean from a sample size of n equals 25. Okay, so we'd like to know, are the data sufficient to conclude that the alcohol has a significant effect on reaction time? And we're going to use a two-tailed test with an alpha of 0.05. So in this case, the researcher would make a two-tailed test if there's no reason to believe it would go in one direction or the other. Um, we're going to split that alpha of 0.05 to both tails. Um, and then we'll run a different test using um, a directional hypothesis of a significant increase in reaction time. So remember, an increase in reaction time means that you are taking more time to react, so you're slower. Okay, so we're going to use a one-tailed test. If we're looking for an increase, that will be on the right tail with an alpha of 0.01. And this is... Um, Pretty standard that when you use a two-tailed test, you use an alpha of 0.05, you split that among the two, and when you use a one-tailed test, you use an alpha of 0.01. But of course, it's up to the researcher to set their alpha level. Um, and so if you wanted to use a one-tailed test with an alpha of 0.05, you could do that. Um, anything higher, though, starts to get a little, little weird. We as a community have decided that an alpha level of 0.05 is acceptable. If you would like to make your alpha smaller to avoid a type 1 error, then you can, right? Okay, and then we want to compute Cohen's D to estimate the size of the effect. So let's get started with these data. So before I even start calculating anything, I'm going to set up my hypotheses, right? So we have to set up our null. That's our little H0 or H0. Um, and that's no difference in reaction time. So what this is saying is that in reality, our mean of 420 seconds is basically the same as our mean of 400 seconds for the larger population. So M equals mu. That's what we're saying with our null. Remember, our null is always, 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 always no difference between the groups. Our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in reaction time. Okay, so what that means is that our mean, even though it's a small difference of 22 milliseconds, is actually significantly different from our population mean. All right, and uh, that would be our alternative hypothesis for our two-tailed test because we don't have a direction. For our one-tailed test, we actually do have a direction, and that's that our mean is larger, right? It's more time than our population mean, okay? So we do have a direction here. So those are our different hypotheses. We always have to have that null because we need to know whether or not we're going to reject it. Okay. All right, so let's figure out what our alphas um, are going to determine our critical regions to be. So for our alpha of 0.05, if we um, take a look at our, let's see if we can do it here. If we take a look at our unit normal table, have it here, right? And we want an alpha level of 0.05, which means that we want to split that in among our two tails for our two tailed test. So we see down here we have that 0.25 here. 1.96 is our critical Z. All right, so if we go back here, our critical Z for our two tailed test is both a positive 1.96 and a negative 1.96, right? Because we have two tails that we have to take into account. Now, for our one tail test, oh, that should be an alpha of 0.01. Excuse the mistake. We have, uh, we want 1% in our tail. So the closest we can get to that here is our 
2.33. Don't know if you can see that here. I'll try and make it. Oh, no, are my, my computer's not. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay. So here we have a 2.33. That's the closest sort of without going over, right? It's like price is right. Got to get the closest without going over if we're going into uh, the tail here for our alpha test. So we're going to use 2.33 as our critical region. So that's our Z critical, 2.33. Okay, so in order to figure out if our mean of our sample falls in, we just have to figure out its Z value, right? But that means that we have to figure out our standard error. Okay, so I'm just going to um, take those critical Z values and put them onto this slide so I know what I'm working with. So for our two-tailed tests, we have both a critical value of 1.96 and negative 1.96. For our one-tailed test of point, alpha 0.01, we have a Z critical of 2.33. So all we have to do is figure out the Z value of our mean, right? So the difference, right, is that we have to find the Z value according to our distribution of sample means, which means that we cannot work with our standard deviation, right? We don't even have a standard deviation of our, of our sample, so we can't use that. So instead, what we're going to do is use our standard error, and we have to find our standard error using the standard deviation of the population. So remember, the standard error is the uh, variability of our distribution of sample means. And we're going to use that standard error to figure out if our mean is extreme enough to reject our null, right? And so that's what we're trying to figure out. So in order to find our standard error before we can find our Z, we simply take the standard deviation of our population and we divide it by the square root of our sample size. So in this case, we have uh, a standard deviation of 40. We have a sample size of 25, which lo and behold has a beautiful, nice round square root. So we divide that 40 by the square root of 25, which is five. That gives us a standard error of eight. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into finding the Z. You have done that for two chapters now, three chap, many chapters now, right? And so um, if you plug in your mean of your sample, your mean of your population, and then your standard error to find the Z of our mean, we get a 2.75. Okay, so it's basically 422 minus 40 divided by 8 gives us a Z of 2.75. So when our Z critical is a positive 1.96, we reject the null party time, right? Ooh, ooh. Okay, and so, um, and again, when our Z critical is 2.33, we reject the null. All right, party time, excellent. So even in this um, more uh, conservative test here, we got an alpha of 0.01, we're still able to reject the null. So 22 milliseconds, a blink of an eye, if that is enough of a difference to say that six ounces of wine is enough to impair your reaction time. All right. So um, this is where we can start to say whether a difference is significant or not. Right. And so people might say, well, 22 milliseconds doesn't really seem like a lot. Doesn't matter. According to the statistics, it's significant. It's a difference. We don't want people drinking a six ounce glass of wine before they get out on the road. All right. Okay. And so um, now that we have a difference and we know it's a significant difference we want to know whether it's a meaningful difference all right and so we use Cohen's C and so for Cohen's C we simply take our mean uh, from our sample subtract the mean from our population and then we divide it by our standard deviation from our population all right so they gave us that and that's 40 not your standard error that gives you the z-score that we just worked with so in this case we have a Cohen's D of 0.5 five, which you saw from the lecture is about a medium effect size. All right. So that's all it is. It's really just putting stuff together that you guys have learned already. So you already know about means, the difference between a mean and a sample and a population. You already know about standard deviation. You already know about Z scores. You already know about sample distributions, unit normal table, probabilities. We're now putting it all together, right? Just building and building putting it all together so we can start to really see if our treatments, whatever that happens to be, 
is producing an effect. So in this case, our treatment was a six ounce glass of wine, which kind of sounds weird, right? Um, but remember, it's just the difference between your population and this novel group that you're creating. So um, we have a medium effect size, so we can go out to, you know, whoever and say that, don't drink the wine, 22 milliseconds can mean the difference between an accident and not an accident. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's weird to say to enjoy statistics, but I do enjoy it. Gets you know, gets us some answers. Um, and uh, good luck with the rest of your um, hypothesis testing. All right. Thanks, everybody.